So you want to install a complex aftermarket car audio system, but you need to make a plan for all of the wiring. What math do we need to do to determine what size power wire we need? What wires do we need to connect to to get signal for an aftermarket amplifier when using the factory radio as the source? What about our speaker wire for the speakers and subwoofer? How do we size that? I'm currently working on a build that is going to feature a five channel DSP integrated amplifier, all upgraded speakers and subwoofers, and I need to plan the wiring for my build. I'm Mark, welcome to Car Audio Fabrication, the channel where together we learn how to master car audio and how to design, build, and install our dream car audio system. Let's figure this out together. So to kick things off, I wanna give you guys a brief explanation of the system that we're planning here in the Elantra. You can see that we're gonna be using the factory head unit to provide signal to the system, so we're going to need to figure all of that out which particular wires we need to connect to. We're going to be using an aftermarket specialty T harness in order to interface with that signal. Since we're going to be disconnecting the factory speakers from the system, we want the factory head unit to still think it's attached to speakers so that it doesn't turn off the output. So we've got some load generating devices. We're going to take the signal into a DSP correction processor, which is going to correct that factory signal. And we're going to then output it to a DSP integrated amplifier that's going to allow us to fully tune the system. Of course, we need to provide power to the different active devices in this system, and that's what we're gonna be figuring out the details for in this video. We're gonna be using new concepts, power wire and signal distribution. And then of course, out of that amplifier, we have all of our connections to the different speakers. We're going to be using the passive crossovers with these front component speakers here, a six and a half inch component set that's located up front. And then in the rear, we have a six and a half inch coaxial set. And then on the fifth channel of this five channel full system amplifier, we're going to be powering two 12 inch shallow mount subwoofers. So once you have all of your gear picked out, I recommend doing a simple layout like this. Now in this case, I'm gonna be using an iPad so I can show you guys the different connections that we're going to be making here to plan all of our wiring, but you could also just use simple pencil and paper. So so in this initial stage of your planning, I recommend keeping things extremely simple. You can see that I've drawn in the factory head unit here. I've also drawn in the battery and I've given myself a couple of different power distribution blocks to connect to. Again, we're not worried about wire size or length at this time. We are just drawing in the simple connections. So on my project here, in terms of the positive and negative power distribution, here's what I've drawn. First of all, I've got the battery and that is connected to the ground. When you see that symbol there, that's what that means means connected to ground so you're also going to see it over here for the ground distribution block connected to the positive post of the battery we have a wire that is going to be short and it goes to our first inline fuse it's always important to have an inline fuse as close to the battery as possible to prevent a short circuit on this particular wire coming out of that inline fuse we have a wire that goes to our power distribution block that distribution block then has an output that provides power for our correction processor and then a separate connection for our amplifier. Similar case for our ground distribution block here, we have a wire connecting to the correction processor and a wire connecting to the amplifier. Now for simplicity's sake, when it comes to the signal wires, which I've drawn in orange here, I've kept things very simple. I can always jot down some notes on my schematic here. And if you guys want to do a more in-depth schematic, you always can. But in my case, I've got signal coming out of that factory head unit, which is connected directly into this T harness. The T harness basically allows us to maintain the connection between the factory head unit and the vehicle, but it allows us to break the connection for the speaker wires that would normally be powering the speakers in the vehicle. So instead of the factory head unit sending the signal to those factory speakers, it's going to send that signal all the way through our processing here. And then we are going to actually have a line that we should draw right here from the amplifier back to our T harness because the amplifier is actually going to have all the connections for our speakers. Those are all going to actually be sent back into this harness and we're going to be using the factory wiring to then distribute that signal to all of the speaker locations. So I know this is a little bit confusing but I actually changed things up here just to make it a little bit more clear. We've got the signal going from the factory head unit into our T harness which has an extension harness connected to it that basically does this path and this path. So that extension harness goes to the back, connects to our LGDs, connects to this, connects to this. And then once we amplify that signal, we bring it back through the extension harness here and interject it into our T harness, 
which is then distributed by the factory vehicle wiring to go to all the speakers. It is worth noting though that there is no factory connection for the subwoofers of course, so we're gonna be connecting directly to the amplifier for those. So now that we have a basic plan, we can start running through some math to determine the sizing of these different wires and also pick out our specific power distribution parts. Now really quick, I do wanna give a quick shout out to our sponsor for this episode, New Concepts. For this project, I'm gonna be using the New Concepts power distribution blocks. In particular for this project, I like this guy here because this gives me a lot of options for what I can do because I can use this particular compact small distribution block as both a power distribution block by selecting a fuse size here, or I can use a link. If I use links on a separate individual distribution block, I can turn a power distribution block into a ground distribution block. You can see an example of using the ground distribution links here. You'll notice that these have two inputs and that's helpful because then if we want to expand our system in the future, we can daisy link these together and add more. A big thanks to them for making these videos possible. If you wanna learn more, check out the links down in the video description. So now we need to size our wiring and size our fuses and we're going to do some very simple math with this equation here. I equals P over V. So that stands for current equals power over voltage. First off, we wanna take into account our power that we're actually going to be using out of the amplifier. In this case, this particular amplifier is 75 watts times four at four ohms. So that's going to be 300 watts plus 600 watts on the subwoofer channel because I plan on wiring these at two ohms. So rather than 1000 watts on the top here, this is going to be 900 watts. For the bottom, our voltage, we're going to use the system voltage, which is 14.4 volts. This gives us 62 and a half amps. Now, because no amplifier in existence is 100% efficient, we're actually going to need more current than this value here in order to provide that full power. So for a class D amp, in this case, we're gonna divide by 0.8, which is about 80% efficient. And that means that we need a little bit more than 78 amps to get our full 900 watts. Now, I looked up the stock alternator size for this particular vehicle and it was 150 amps. So you may think to yourself, man, to use 80 amps of current when you only have 150 amps to power everything else in the vehicle, that just seems substantial and like it might not work. But the other thing that you need to account for is that we're not going to be playing pure sine waves and getting 900 watts out of this amplifier at all times. Music is dynamic and we're actually going to be drawing far less current. Now, since music and your listening session and how far you're gonna have the volume up and down changes constantly, there is no way to do an exact calculation here, but we do have a way to do an approximation. If we consider ourselves a bass heavy listener, we're going to use a multiplier of 0.5. So we're gonna do 78 times 0.5 and that gives us an approximate current draw of 39 amps. If we're more of an average listener, we would use a value of 0.2. In this case, 78 amps times 0.2 gives us approximately 16 amps. Again, note that these are just estimates here, but this does give you an idea if you do need to consider aftermarket electrical upgrades for your application. Based on the amount of power you plan on using and based on the type of listener that you are, this is going to give you a better idea. In our case here, where we're only going to be using about 16 amps on average out of our five channel amplifier, we should be good to go with the stock electrical system. When it comes to sizing our wiring, we want to plan on worst case scenario, which in this case is our calculated 78 amps. That's if we were playing pure sine waves out of this amplifier. So I like to note those values down here next to the wiring so that we know for both our fusing and for our wire sizes. Now for a smaller device like this, like a standalone DSP or a correction DSP, we want to resort to the manual for that device. And in the manual here for this device, they're saying a one amp fuse. This is a really good thing to note here as well because this tells me that this has such a low current draw I might be able to just simply power it from the factory head unit connection instead or another option would be I could use a larger fuse on our fuse distribution block here and have this break off to a separate smaller fuse distribution block which allows me to use a smaller fuse size. This is definitely worth noting because another thing I could do with that smaller fuse distribution block is I could break off and power things like cooling fans or LED lights. Depending on your build, that's something that you might want to implement. For our application here, that one amp amount almost isn't even worth noting, but I do 
want to point it out to you guys just in case you were doing a two amplifier system where this was drawing more current what you need to do for this leg of the wiring here is simply add up the different current draws between these different devices the sum of these different currents is going to also tell you the size of your inline fuse here at the battery if we look at the power wire specifications for the Colossus Flex wire, which is the wire we plan to use on this build from New Concepts, you can see the different sizes here. They have 4 aught, 1 aught, 4 gauge, and 8 gauge. You can see that 8 gauge would be too small at 60 amps because we need about 80 amps of our current handling capability at the particular length that is common for vehicles here. So we're going to step up to the next size, which is going to give us 150 amps of current handling capability, which will be more than good enough for for this amplified system. This value is also helpful to know because we should not use any fuse sizes over 150 amps because that would now make the wire become the fuse. So I can note throughout my drawing here that our wire size is going to be four gauge. Also a side note, a common mistake that I see made is people think that they only need to have the power wire be the large wire and then they'll use a really small ground wire. Remember that we are completing a full circuit here. So however large we size our power wire, we also wanna make sure that our ground wire is that same size. When it comes to sizing the fuse on this distribution block here, I would use an 80 amp fuse for the amplifier. That's because that's the next size up. It wouldn't necessarily hurt to go the next size down. It would in fact be probably a little bit safer to use a 60 amp fuse because based on our listening, we're probably likely never going to pull that amount of current. So if you did want to be a little bit safe and downsize there, you could. And since I'm going to be powering a couple of other things here, I'd probably go with a 100 amp fuse fuse on this because remember our wire is capable of handling up to 150 amps so if I did go with that 100 amp fuse there that would give me some options to add some other additional gear if need be. If you guys would like to see a much more in-depth video about fuse sizing, check out the related video here. Next, let's talk about sizing our speaker wiring here. And this is something that comes up quite often in the community and something I wanna talk about because we are going to be using the factory speaker wiring for all of these connections here. And this extension harness here uses 16 gauge wiring, which is also quite common for the factory speaker wiring size. Is that far too small for these speakers? Again, this goes back to music music being highly dynamic, especially for mids and highs speakers, you are virtually never going to see the full amount of power going through these wires. And for that case, it is oftentimes more than acceptable to use the OEM factory speaker wiring. But if you are kind of looking for a rough rule of thumb, anything less than 150 watts per channel is going to be just fine on these speaker wires here. The only case I would start to worry is if you're over that 150 watts per channel, or if you're trying to power multiple different speakers, let's say you're doing an SPL build and you have a full door full of speakers, in that case, you're going to want to wire your own aftermarket wiring into the door. But in our case here, for the speakers that we have planned at these power levels, we're going to be just fine with our factory wiring. Where wiring size does start to matter much more is when it comes to powering our subwoofers. Now in this case here, for anything under a thousand watts, we're going to be just fine with using 12 gauge wire as long as we don't have a super long wire run. But when you do start to get above a thousand watts RMS, that's when you are going to want to start increasing the size of your speaker wire. But again, in our case here, we're using 600 watts RMS total, so we'll be going with the 12 gauge speaker wire. Now that we've determined the sizing of all of our wires, we need to determine the actual length of the wire that we need to order. Now, a couple of quick recommendations for you guys here. What you can do is you can just take a simple string and kind of string it along the rough path that you plan to use. Don't be super concerned with getting it down to the exact inch. Just get a rough idea and then measure that string. You can even approximate the lengths of these different runs with a tape measure and my recommendation would be that you add 10 to 20 percent on whatever you come up with your total length for each of these before ordering because it's always good to have just a little bit of extra wire so you don't have to get out that wire stretcher. This is where it can once again be helpful to have our diagram here because we can simply record in each of these lengths, total them up, add that extra 10 to 20 percent and be good to go. 
Now, we're a community here at Car Audio Fabrication, so I do have a question of the episode for you guys. Do you guys prefer the full system amplifiers, like the five channel amplifiers that power both the speakers and the subwoofer in one package, or do you guys prefer to have separate amplifiers? I'm curious what you guys out there in the community prefer. If you guys would like more in-depth car audio electrical videos, definitely be sure to check out the related videos here on the channel. Next time you need wire and power distribution parts for a car audio build, definitely check out our show sponsor, New Concepts. Learn more at the links down in the video description. A big thanks to them along with Jerry, Joseph, William, and the rest of the Patreon membership team for making these videos possible. And I thank you guys for tuning in and watching.